As we move into the new normal, we need to plan for our workforce to be able to return to the workplace in a safe, controlled way. And I've got a free power app that'll help you do that. Hi, I'm Stuart Redout and I am Modern Work Customer Success Manager at Microsoft. And today I want to show you the Building Request app, which is a free power app that we've just released. Now it is completely free, it uses seeded connectors. So that means that we are not using any of the premium connectors. Uh, it's just based on SharePoint lists. So you don't need to pay for any additional licenses to be able to run this for your whole organization. Uh, and I've done a separate video which shows you how you can install this in your tenant and walk through it with you step by step. Although there are really great instructions on this uh, on the website at aka.ms forward slash building request app. Uh, so let me just walk through and just show you what it looks like and uh, then you can experience it. So here I am uh, on my tenant here uh, and I'm going to walk through now uh, it's part of the build we installed this into Teams. So I created a team which was the Building Access Admin Team. So what we're gonna start off with is showing you how you can set up your organization, all of your buildings, etc., in this Building Request app. So I'm gonna click on the Buildings app, um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new building here. So uh, I'm going to go into here, and I'm just gonna call it Sherman Building, and the address is 42 Wallaby Way. And the country is United Kingdom. And then the next thing is the building type. So these are either monitored or unmonitored buildings. So an unmonitored building is where there is no kind of security that stops you coming in. And then monitored would be that there would be somebody who would be able to check uh, people's access. The next thing we've got is the auto approval threshold. So uh, this sets how many uh, requests get automatically approved before it goes to manager approval. So we're gonna set it to 50. If you set it to zero, then everything gets uh, manager approval. Uh, and if you set it to 100, then everything goes through straight away. Um, then next, we're going to put the key eligibility criteria. So for this, we're going to just say essential first line workers only. And it just gives people a guide on who can return into the workplace. And then we're going to put on site access instructions. So I'm going to say report to security upon arrival and departure. Um, and we could also put helpful little notes in here. So I'm just going to say that there's no catering services available. Uh, and then people know. Uh, so once we've just kind of configured what our building is, I'm going to go save and configure spaces. Now spaces could be floors for some buildings and some organizations, or it could be uh, named areas. So in mine, I'm going to set up a new space here and I'm going to call it the innovation suite. And what's the capacity? So we're going to say the capacity here is just going to be five people. So click save and let's just do a couple more just so that we can get used to that. So uh, new space. Uh, and this one is going to be called the customer contact center. And the capacity here is 28. Okay, save that one. And let's just do one more here. So let's do the management office. And the capacity here is just three people here. So I'm gonna save that. Okay, so I've kind of drafted up my building. Now I need to publish that out. So I'm gonna click back. To where I was and if I just scroll down here there's a status option down here um, and you need to change that to be published and then you need to click save perfect okay so really easy to use here so let's go back and we're just going to walk through the app on the setup just to show you what it looks like so here are safety precautions so this is where we can uh, publish out specific safety advice so I'm going to put one here which is just going to be general advice. Okay, and we're just going to paste in uh, some text there and we can say which country it applies to. So we could just leave it blank for all of them. But this is just a uh, UK specific advice we're going to say here. Um, if I had a, uh, a URL where people could go for more information, I can do that. Um, and I clicked publish. So the next one I'm going to do is just on uh, face coverings, just guidance on face coverings. I'm going to paste that advice in there. Perfect. Again, this is United Kingdom. And at this time I'm going to do published and save. Brilliant. Lovely. Okay. And let's go back. Uh, now the next one here is the key questions. So this is like your eligibility criteria 
um, on whether people can actually come into the building. And what you want to do is write questions where the correct answer is no. So um, I'm going to write, have you had any COVID symptoms in the last 14 days? And uh, let's make sure we change that to be published. Okay. I'm going to do a, another one. So let's create new. Um, so have you had it? So now has anyone, uh, any member of your household or others that you live with shown any COVID symptoms in the last 14 days? And let's just change that to published as well. And let's just do one more um, just so we're, we're all clear on that. So are there any reasons that you cannot abide with the social distancing guidelines? Okay, and let's publish that one out. Perfect. And let's just hit back again. And the last one here is setting. So I did show this when I did the setup video, uh, but just kind of walk through this here. So we can limit the request to a certain number of days in the future. And there's a message that we can give if people try to book too far in advance. Um, there's some other settings which were covered in that setup video. Um, and then down the bottom here, we've got a key questions failure message. So if somebody answers yes to any of those key questions, then the message that's given to them. So I'm going to click save. Okay, and now I'm going to switch over to just the persona of somebody who wants to book a place. So as I said, we've actually, in part of the setup, we've uh, installed the app into Teams. So it's on that left-hand app bar, or if you're on the mobile, it's on the bottom tray. So I'm going to click on Building Access, and you can see my uh, profile there. Um, and I don't have any reservations. So I'm going to do a new request. And here you can see those key eligibility questions. So I haven't had any symptoms in the last 14 days, but someone in my household has, and I can uh, abide. So you can see here that it's saying, sorry, you don't qualify for building access and give me advice to contact my manager. So let's go back. Let's now say it's been 14 days since that family member's had any symptoms. So I can say no, no symptoms, and there's no reasons. Okay. Lovely. So here now we can search for those buildings that we set up earlier. So I'm going to go for the Sherman building, which is monitored. Essential first line workers only. That's the advice. So what is my business reason for access? Okay. So in here, I'm just going to put innovation center essential access for role and click save and continue. And it shows me how many spaces are available in each of those areas. And that little icon there is telling me that it's automatically approved. And uh, the other one with the clock says it requires manager approval. And I can pick the dates I want, but I'm going to just leave it for today. So I'm going to click a uh, innovation suite request. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and submit a request for that one day. OK, and I can see here in my request that that has been approved. And that was because it was auto approved here. And now if I go back, uh, and go to my requests again and click on the info and it shows me that and it shows me this QR code which I'm going to need to get into the building. So I'm going to go back and again if I was just on the screen I could click uh, go to request and it shows me today's request uh, for me to check in um, or if I was on a mobile device so here I am on a mobile uh, if I went to go to request and just tap on that then again, it will show me that on my phone and then I can just show that phone to the security guard and they can scan that. So let's have a look at that view now. So let's get rid of my personal view and I'm going to uh, go here. So now I've got uh, my security um, scanner here. So I'm gonna go click on Sherman building. So that's where I'm working for today. Okay, and I can see here, I've just got like a rough view of what's going on in the building. So there's one person approved, one person will wait for them to arrive. Nobody's checked in and there's nobody on site at the moment. Um, and the great thing is I can click on the request list and I can search for a building again. So let's, or a space. So I'm going to search for innovation 
Now, I don't, haven't got anything because they're all approved. So if I untick pending approval, then I can see the approved list. So that's quite useful. I can switch between those. So if somebody says, um, I'm waiting for approval, you can view those straight from the app. Um, so what I want to do is validate that. So I'm going to click on validate and I'm clicked on the or scanned the person's uh, QR code. And here you go. It's pulled up my details. It's shown a photo of me. Um, it's said who my manager is in case I've got any queries, whatever. Um, and then the security officer can just click uh, check in. And now you can see that that dashboard is updated. It says this one person's checked in and one person's on site. Okay. And that's just really useful, really easy way for somebody to be able to do that. Now, when it comes to checkout, just do the same again. We scan the QR code and this time we just tap on checkout and that checkout has been completed now and the person is out of the building. Perfect. And that's all been updated. So we can see that one person's checked in and there's nobody on site now. So that's great view just to give you that glance uh, just from without having to log on to any Power BI dashboards or whatever. And there you go. Now I've checked out of my uh, security role. So let's have a look here now at what it's like if uh, we go in and we set up uh, an, an unmonitored one. So I'm going to create new again. And this time, this is going to be, I'm going to call this Electricity House. We get Electricity House. The address is Power Park. So, there we go, Power Park. And the country is United Kingdom. And this time, and this time I'm going to put it in as an unmonitored one. Okay, and I'm going to set the auto approval threshold to zero. So I want all of the requests to go through approval. And I'm going to say this is electricity house workers only. Okay, and then on site access. So I'm going to say please check in and out using the app because we need people to be able to check in and out themselves. So the view that you saw there for the security guard, let's do a new space. Uh, so the, the guard for the security guard where you can check in and out, the people would do that themselves. Okay, so here I'm setting up the ground floor offices uh, and just a capacity of 10 for those. Okay. And that'll do just for now. So I'm going to go back and uh, come back again. Oh, no, I need to go back. Let me, so where I can see here on my buildings this one is still in draft so when you do configure those spaces you need to make sure that you change the building to be as published and i've been caught out on that a number of times so let's hit back okay so we're all done on that so let's just have a look at that from a request approval point of view so uh, there we go so i'm going to make a new request okay so no 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 so continue Lovely. So I'm going to search for my building. So this time I'm going to search for electricity house. Okay. What's my business reason? So this is going to be more important now because uh, this is going to go through approval. Okay. So I've already got a reservation for the 22nd. So let's do one for the 23rd. Okay. And ground floor offices. And you can see there the icon shows me that it requires manager approval. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to submit request for one day. There we go. And that will now go through to the manager for approval and they'll receive a card. And I can see that it's on pending approval. Now the manager would receive a card that they can just uh, approve through an adaptive card, but actually I don't have a manager in this tenant. So uh, my request has actually gone into building requests. So if anybody doesn't have one, it goes straight into there. So this is what the card looks like for managers. So you can chat with the person if you need to ask any more questions or you can approve or reject. And I'm gonna approve mine. There we go, and it was easy. So just one tap makes it really easy. And for the end user, they get a flow message back from the flow box that says uh, that the on-site request has been approved. So they know where they're at at all times. Okay, so just pop back onto that building access. Then I can go to my requests anytime, and then I can see that my electricity house one has been approved. So it's really easy for the end user to be able to see what's going on with their bookings um, and view any any time. And if they were on a phone, it's even more convenient for them. Okay, so we've seen that. Now, so let's just have a look now and switch to a data perspective. 
and look at the Power BI dashboard that comes with it that allows you to get some insights into how that's used. So I'm in my building access admin team and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in the Power BI dashboard that I created earlier so that that's accessible to the building admin team. Um, and we can see here through our Power BI, um, there's four different uh, types of reports here. So I can filter that down by different types. So let's say that I wanted to filter by the Sherman building. It'll show me how many requests they've had for today, how many people are on site now, etc. what the occupancy percentage is. Um, and we can look at the access requests. So you can see all of the access requests that have come in and you can split that out by building really useful and you can see how many people made the request and then how many people approved them and, and how many people checked in. So really useful there. One of the great features there is a contact tracker. So if uh, an employee reports that they've had come down with symptoms, then you can use these sliders here to be able to narrow down the dates that we think uh, that, that they've had uh, the last 14 days. Um, and then it will show you all of the spaces where they, they've occupied um, and it will kind of, oh, let me just move that out a bit. There we go. Because we, that's it. So it shows that I've been in the innovation suite. Um, and then if other people had checked in, then in that panel, it would have shown who I had contact with or who was checked in at the same time. And then the last one is the building 360 breakdown. So it just shows you kind of everything on one place, showing you how many requests you've had, what your percentage occupancy, patterns by month or by week, whatever. Um, and how many people have kind of uh, book slots as opposed to check in. So really, really great power app there. And to get it, all you need to do is go to aka.ms forward slash building access app. Um, and it's there. There's really detailed instructions that tell you how to do it. I have recorded another video uh, to show you how to do that build, but actually the instructions are really, really detailed. So hopefully you'll find that useful in your organization.